Hello. In this video I want to do something creative with the Korg mod wave. In the mod wave you can use your own wavetables, so I thought it would be a fun idea to use a photo and convert that to a wavetable. So let's see what kind of interesting sounds this could give us. We are going to use this photo and convert that to a wavetable. It's a very simple photo with some elements in the middle of it. It's a treble clef and um, this will give some interesting sounds that we can use in the wavetable. So we are going to use basically this part of the video of, of the photo to convert it. So let's do that. Um, for that we need a wavetable editor and I'm going to use Serum for this but you can also use another one if you like that. And I'm going to use a device that can convert an image to a sample image to wavetable for instance this is a max for live device it's free to download from the max for live library if you are using ableton live suite you can easily download it and add it to your uh, project and it's this max for live device and you can see that you can drop an image on this black box so um, let's drop the treble clef to the image locator well, here you see a nice white image with the treble clef analyzed. So let's save it. You can do that by pressing on this button. And let's go to that folder and let's call it um, treble test, for instance. Okay, it's in there now. Let's go to that folder. Here's the WAV file, and we are going to drag it in the in the uh, we're going to drag it in the serum. So if we look, we see that the image is converted, and that we see the treble clef over here. So really nice. Let's listen to it how it sounds now. Not bad at all. And when we are going to look, then you see the treble clef over here starting to create all kind of interesting waveforms. And that the uh, non-treble clef parts are, well, basically noise that we are going to remove. So um, first, let's get the interesting parts of it, out of it. So um, we are going to remove everything that isn't uh, the treble clef. Um, it starts over here at this uh, waveform. So let's remove the first uh, elements. And let's see, it's gone here. So remove it over there. Remove. So now we have... Now we only have the 43 elements that's uh that are interesting for this specific uh procedure so normalize it so that every sample is every waveform is as loud as possible and let's clean it up a little bit this is better um let's slow it down yeah, really good uh, presentation of it. You see the clef still here. So let's listen uh, how it is when we are going to use crossfading in the... Yeah, really good sound. So um, we are going to export those 43 uh, wave waveforms. So um, let's export it. Let's go to the ModWave directory and let's call it Digital Waves. And save it. Okay. We don't need uh, Serum anymore. Uh, we are going to use the Core ModWave now. And when we are listening to the Core ModWave, we have the inner performance. And what we can do is import that uh, specific digital wave now 
in the wavetables uh, section. So open the wavetable, select file, import WAF as wavetable, and let's go to the correct folder, modwave, QR digital waves. So now it's imported and press the performance tab and go to init performance and let's create a sound out of it. So here is where the phone starts. Um, we have two oscillators and we are going to use that, that wavetable that we just created in the oscillator section. So let's select it, QR digital, here it is. And we are also going to load it in the, in the second oscillator. And um, why do we do that? Well, if we use only one uh, oscillator, I want to have a, a massive sound. So we are going to, instead of using unison, we are going to use a panning trick and a tuning trick. So let's do that. <laughs> And without the cost fading. So, very nice. Um, let's add movement to it. And you can use the morph of the, or the crossfade envelope. But when, when it, uh, but when it returns, you will see that it stays on position zero. So, well, we could transfer this to an LFO by setting the triggers uh, resource, for instance, to um, to minus one, minus whatever, but minus something, minus four. And when you lower the sustain, then um, it will re-trigger itself. So we could do that, um, but it's much more easier to use an existing LFO for that. So assign an LFO, set it to 50. Um, we want to turn it up and down. So set the phase to minus 90 and set the offset to, to, the, uh, to the lowest value. So we have created now area A going up and going down kind of LFO. Um, and assign it to this position. So if we run it now, it keeps on going uh, as long as we want. So we are going to slow it down to a double brief, I think it's pronounced. Um, so that's good. Um, and we want to use the same oscillator for this one and set it also to 50 so that it rounds so because we did want to use the unison but we want to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of extras So it's a good sound, um, but you also hear that it's a well that it misses the sparkle in the high end. And that's something that is a trick in um, that's a need to know thing in the mod wave. Let me show this with the EQ, and this is quite important. Um, here's the EQ. You see that the the top the top section over here, the really high frequencies are cut off. Now, why is that? That's because um, let me see if we can use them together on one screen. Okay, watch what happens. That's uh, that's something the Poly Six filter does. So let's see what happens when we uh, change it. Uh, so let's see what happens when we are going to use a different filter. Uh, 
you see much brighter uh, frequencies to the top. So that's already a uh, huge improvement. And we can also add that sparkle by adding some aliasing. And the Vintage 8 is a really high uh, amount of aliasing. And the Vintage 12 is much more even. So I really like the Vintage 12 uh, modifier for that. And here's the sparkle. So I know it's just a little a matter of a little sound design. Um, let's add an uh, envelope, something like this, a little decay, some sustain, some release. Let's see how that works out. Yes, and we want to have an envelope on the cutoff filter, for instance. Nice. Let's change that envelope. Add some EQ, some high end. Some reverb. And there is some um, Okay, that starts to get in the... That's going to be the sound that we want. And let's add a sample in the second oscillator, for instance, the shady cove. And we are going to copy the envelope of number one. Set it to a slower. We hear that sparkle in the top end now. Let's first save it. View our digital waves. So we've added the shady cove now. We saved it and we've modified the envelope. And basically, that's all we have to do. The sound is finished now. So let's see what we can do when we add some extra effects on top of it. Going to use one of my own presets for that. Some granular 
pitch effects and some micro delays on top of it. So here we have our finished sound. It was based on that image that we transferred to a wavetable and now it sounds like this. So a good thing when you're out of inspiration, I just took a photo, converted that to a wavetable and imported that wavetable and did some quick sound design on it and uh, used uh, a couple of effects on it. And within a few minutes you have this result. So it's really interesting to try out different things and the ModWave makes that all possible. So that's it for now and hope to see you soon again.